Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, their favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on today's podcast, I'm super excited to get some wisdom, to get some more knowledge about all types of real estate and investing classes. But I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-hosts, the brain, the professor, your fight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? Um, I'm good. I'm good. I'm a little annoyed at how incredible your your video and audio setup is have, has evolved. I'm, I'm like a, a dinosaur, you know, talking to... You know, basically a, you know, someone that's like time traveled, like you're like, like years ahead of everybody. Well, thank you, Mark. But, you know, if, if you want to buy my course on how to create the best video studio ever, uh, I'll make it available to you. I would love it. Is it on Investor Ninjas? It will be at some point. Well, fantastic. So our guest today is Gabe Peterson from the Real Estate Investing If you're not familiar with Gabe, he's the founder of Great Northwest Home Buyers, a principal at Equal Housing Group, and most importantly, the host of the Real Estate Investing Club. Gabe started out his career completely oblivious to real estate as a path. He got started as a management consultant for Fortune 500 companies and worked the cubicle life for over seven years. After working for the man. He bought his first triplex in Tacoma, Washington, and the rest is history. Gabe has extensive experience across many different asset classes and strategies. And then Gabe decided to start what you know today as the Real Estate Investing Club podcast and YouTube show. Gabe Peterson, welcome. Thank you very much, Mark. And yeah, I, uh, I, I do have to corroborate Mark's statement. Scott's video is a little bit better, so uh, he, he did nail it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, let's not let's not just turn in this into the whole Scott Todd show. Gabe Peterson, <laughs> let's just rewind the tape and and kind of tell us a little bit about your cubicle life, working as a management consultant, and then what sparked your interest in getting into real estate. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, I mean, after college, I graduated with a degree in philosophy. I thought I was going to law school. And I went, I shadowed some lawyers. I realized this is not the life for me. This is not what I want. Um, so I didn't really have a purpose, didn't really have a direction, graduated college. And the first thing that popped up, a friend got a job at Accenture, which is this big consulting firm out there. Um, and he said, this is a fun gig. You get to travel a lot. You get a decent amount. You know, you're, you're, they pay you pretty well. So I should, sure, let's do it. I jumped on, got a job at, as a consultant. Um, and I worked a few years. The first you know, year or two was good, but I really started to rag on me because I didn't like the, the commuting. I didn't like that you just had to be at a location for eight hours, regardless of you know, what kind of work needed to be done. And it just over time, I just really, I didn't like the job. I didn't, I didn't like working in the corporate world. Um, so I started kind of looking for different ways to get out of that environment, get out of that as a career path. Um, and I actually, real estate was not the first thing that I started. I started in e-commerce um, and digital marketing. Um, I started my own store, brought that up to about 20,000 a month, but it turned out not to be a good fit either because again, I was just stuck behind a computer screen, you know, all alone in my room, not really doing, interacting with other people, which is what I really enjoy. Um, but then I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which kind of got me, got that spark going, got me, gave me the kind of the framework to, uh, to kind of go forward in real estate. Um, and I met a few people that were having some good success in real estate, which gave me kind of a model that I could look at and be like, yeah, it does work. Um, so then I bought that first triplex that I was talking about. And uh, I mean, there's a lot of different <laughs> turn, twists and turns since that point, but um, it eventually led me to mobile home and RV parks. And that's where I am today. Wow. I, I can't tell you how many people we talk to, myself included, where that rich dad, poor dad book was the impetus to yeah. create passive income and get into real estate in a, in a big, big way, not, not passively, but yeah. like as our full-time gig. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I, uh, it, it's just, yeah, it's one of those mindset shift books. Yeah. Exa yeah. Mindset is really what it is. I, I tell people like when they want to know how to do real estate, 
that's not the book to go to. But if you if you don't really understand, if you don't see the potential of real estate, pick it up because it is a great it really outlines how real estate works and why it's beneficial and why it's a good path to go down. Um, so I always recommend that book to people who are new to the space. Yeah, Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? I, mean, I think that uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad clearly is a is a kind of a game changing book, right? I think that a lot of people who are doing real estate investing today or businesses they they all they all you know have have maybe started with that Rich Dad Poor Dad book. And I think that the um, I think that the cool thing that he did in the book, honestly, is that. You know, he he outlined that there is a difference. There's a difference in mindset. There's a difference in mentality of of the way that you do things. And you know, I think that really, to me, the the second best, or really the best book that he wrote was the second book, the Cash Flow Quadrant. Mm, yep. The Cash Flow Quadrant, you know, as it talks about, you know, whether you're an employee or self-employed, and then on the other side of the equation is the business owner and the investor. And he basically showed like the minute he showed the tax rules and the life is different on the right side of the equation versus the left side of the equation, man, I wanted to be on the right side badly, badly. And I think that, you know, you get that. And there's one line in there that I'll never forget that he that he wrote that basically said that what makes what makes for a business is systems. And basically what makes real estate such a great business is that it that each individual unit or each thing is a system, electrical system, plumbing system. The entire house is a built-in system. And the minute I read that, I was just like, wow, alone. Yeah, so, so Gabe, let's talk about your system. So you've invested in all these different asset classes. Walk us through it and then walk us through your, your strategy now, like why mobile home parks and RV investing as opposed to say apartment buildings. Yep. Yeah, no, I'm, I really like uh, mobile home RV parks. Um, so I started, the first thing I did obviously was single, well, actually it wasn't, it was small multifamily, but um, you can consider triplexes essentially single family. Um, and from there I, I got into wholesaling and flipping houses. And that is, I mean, it is, you're in real estate. And so if you, if you haven't had any experience, I feel like that you, you can get your hands dirty there. Um, but it is a job. It's like it is your it's work. You're out there. You're doing the work. You're getting the you're um, marketing for properties. You're project managing all this stuff. You you can set up systems to do that well. But I you know I didn't get to that point. It just kind of dragged me out. Um, and so I was kind of thinking, what can I do that has less um, active components to it? Like flipping houses is a very it's very intensive. Like there is a lot of work that goes into it. Um, and so I was, and I wanted to hold on to properties. I had, you know, a couple of small, um, single family duplex that I was renting out. But again, there's a lot of work that went into it because the, you know, things would break, like the toilet would break or the, the sliding door, or wh whatever it may be, you know, you know, tenants call you, they have issues with the house and you got to take care of it. Um, I didn't have a property manager. I was doing it myself. And so I dealt with all that and I really felt the issues pop up. Um, and so then I met a friend who had taken Kevin Bupp's course, uh, who's a, who's a big guy in, in mobile home parks. And he kind of sold me the dream of mobile home parks and I, I felt for it and I liked it and I totally agree with it. Now it's basically when you're inventing in a land lease community, something like a mobile home RV park, um, you don't really have to deal with the structure, which is what, where a lot of the headaches come from when you're talking about things like multifamily or even industrial, things like that. What you really have to deal with is just the infrastructure, what's under the ground or above. So the electrical and utilities, and that reduces the amount of stress and the amount of issues that the investor has to deal with um, significantly. And the cost per pad is, or the cost per unit is a lot less. Um, so you can get more units for less money. The cash flow is great. So our cap rate's usually around eight to 12%. Um, and the, the, management of the actual property itself is uh, is less i love it i love it um scott todd all right so okay. gabe uh i let's say i want to go invest in a mobile home bar right like it i've always been told like mobile home parks you know if you go to like loop net whatever you're looking at the, uh, at the wrong place mail to the to the yeah. uh owners well if i want to go like 
I, I, I'm like an instant gratification kind of a dude, right? Like when I want to buy an investment and we buy land, when I want to buy land, I can literally mail someone an offer. They will accept that offer. And probably within 30 days, I could have like five to 10 different properties easily with, with my mailing. Now, if I go mail a mobile home park and there's only what, 40 something thousand mobile home parks in America and they're not making more than 55,000. Yeah. 55, yep. Okay. They're going down. Okay. Every year they, they're closing more. They're not making any more of them. So now all of a sudden I got uh, like, and competition doesn't scare me, but now you and I and everybody else is going after these 55,000 people. And like, I start to mail to them. One, how do I separate myself? And then two, like, how long is it before I have a deal? Yeah, so that's one thing. I almost quit um, going down this path because it took us what, six or eight months before we got our first deal. Um, and that is, it can, I mean, if you don't have a light at the end of the tunnel and you're just, you know, grinding every day for six to eight months, it can be really hard. Um, you really do, I feel like, single family, you know, land, you really can just go out there and do it. Um, with mobile home parks, there, there's much more of a buildup, um, in my experience at least, uh, and that can be disheartening. Um, but once you get that momentum going and momentum being like, you know, mobile home and mobile home owners mo or an RV owners, they, uh, you're not gonna, they're not gonna sell in the first time you talk to them. Um, we've had one that sold 16 months after we talked to them so that the buildup is that you just have to keep talking to these people until they're ready and, and they will be ready eventually, but it's just, you just gotta keep that connection going. Um, Shoot, what was your main question? I was I was going down a path and yeah, it was it's basically about like one, how long does it take to get a deal? Ah. And then two, how am how like I'm you and I are mailing I mean not technically, but you and I or me and fifteen other of our mobile home park investors are all mailing oh, how to the differentiate five thousand yeah. people. And how like this is this is where you know like the relationship really comes in, right? Like yeah. you gotta connect yeah. with that or you're out differentiation in terms of like how so you're asking like how do you get the deal versus somebody else and the reason that we're really good is that we've nailed down our marketing um, we have multiple different uh, channels that we use and um, we are my partner Martin door he his follow-up is just on point he's great at following up with people um, I'm really good at marketing. So we, we have a really good lead flow. So the, the first touch with people, we have really good um, lead flow with all our different marketing sources. And then we have really good follow up. And that is really what kind of makes the process work. Um, if you don't, if you don't really have a good grasp of marketing, yeah, mobile homes can be pretty hard. Actually, uh, um, letters aren't or direct mail isn't our best source. Um, we we do pretty well with PPC, um, RVMs, and uh, cold calling, but we don't do cold calling anymore just because it takes so much time. Um, texting works. What, what is what is PVC and RVM? Uh, PPC is uh, pay per click. So PPC. search. Oh, pay per click. Ads. Oh, I, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pay per click. Yeah, Google Ads. Um, Google, Google ads. and Facebook ads. We've we we have success with that, and then RVMs is ringless voicemail. Um, so, you know, ringless voicemail. And then texting. Um, we have done direct mail before, but it's not. Uh, it is more expensive than the other other um, channels. So, but it also it, like mobile home park owners. There's a lot of um, mom and pop owners out there, and so direct mail is a really good way to get them because they don't they don't do PPC. They don't you know pick up their phone and search things. Um, and their RVMs don't work for them a lot of the times because they're on a landline. Um, so you can't, you know, drop a, a voicemail into their inbox. Um, so yeah, direct mail is, is a good way if you're, if you're going for mobile home RV parks. Okay. So I have so many questions, Gabe, <laughs> but I think, I think the, the, the first question I would have is let's get meta because I think the listeners could really benefit from what you what you define as good follow up. Sorry, I was uh, drinking there. Um, so good follow up, and good. So there's multiple ways that we do it. You have multiple touch points. Um, for one, if a if someone 
we reach out to them and they say, you know, they're not like, hell no, I do not want to sell right now. Then we put them in a drip. Um, so a drip campaign, email drip campaign. And that's just like every month. Um, I just send them a really simple email that says, Hey, just checking in. Um, you know, we're still interested in buying. No, no pressure on you right now, but whenever you are interested, go ahead and reach out. We're ready for you. Um, and so that drip just goes every month and it, it goes to our um, masking number and that goes to our, um, our acquisitions manager, Martin Dorr. And then the ones who are, who have expressed interest, they're like, you know, I am, I do want to sell. I'm, I'm ready. Just not right now. Like this isn't the perfect time, but eventually I do have that interest. I have that intent. Um, this is the direction I'm going. Then Martin puts them in, in his own follow up schedule. And so he'll follow up with them. Um, sometimes he does it every week, sometimes once a month. Um, it just really depends on how hot the lead is. And, uh, but you, they don't leave that, that follow up process until they are, they've sold. Like the follow up just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going until they, you know, they're out of the process or they just are really like, you know, something changes in their situation. Like, you know, we've decided to give it to our sons or we've decided to, you know, we just sold it on the open market, something like that. That, that makes sense. Scott Todd, what do you think? I mean, I, I'll until they die, right? Like that's, that's right. the, uh, that's the mindset. I think that's a good mindset to have. Yep. I, I, I think most people have a mindset where, you know, if I follow up two, three times, nothing happens, I'll just put them on the back burner. And, you know, I think in land and I think in, in certainly mobile home park investing, it's a huge mistake because you, there's you know, one deal can move the needle. Yep. So don't let it go. Yep. If you've got somebody who's even slightly warm. Yeah, exactly. If they express any interest, that is, that's where, that's what matters. Um, so once you get that little, little intention, then you got to grab onto that and just keep, keep following it until it turns into something. Okay. And I have to admit when you said you do RV park investing, um, you know, I went immediately bleary eyed, like convince me, convince Scott Todd, mobile home park of investing. We get RV park investing. I don't get it at all. Yeah. So RV parks is just incidental. Um, our focus is mobile home parks, but RV parks are just, most of them are mixed. And so you have, um, you know, 10 lots that are mobile home and then 20 lots that are RV. And so if so long as, you know, when you look at their books um, and you see the rent roll and you don't see a lot of turnover, if, you know, some people will stay in an RV space for, you know, three, four years, if we see that and it's a long-term stay RV park, then we're, you know, thumbs up. If it actually operates as like a campground, so people stay there for a weekend or a week, then it's, you know, it's a no-go for us because we, we really do, we, even if it is an RV park, we want to operate it as a mobile home park. We want it, it to be a long-term stay. Um, and so that's, yeah, RV parks as themselves, if it's just an RV park, it's a campground, that's a different kind of business, a different kind of model. Um, than what we would go for because it's just a lot more intensive. Um, but if it operates as a long-term stay, then then that's what we're interested in. Okay, Scott Todd. You know, I I think I think it really comes down to this, Mark. I think it comes down to follow-up, right? Like that's a that's a big thing, and I think that you nailed it. Like a lot of people, they would follow up three, four, five times. It'd be like ah, the they they have my number, and the reality is is that they're going to I mean, there. Everybody looks for the easy button, okay? So, like, I know everybody talks about, oh, you got to get three quotes on things, and you know, look, even getting three quotes on something is a pain. And a lot of times, people will just say, oh, that sounds, that price sounds good. Let's just go do it. So you need to be top of mind. So even when we go to sell land, even if they've ghosted me, we still follow up with them. Even if they're not opening the emails, we still follow up with them because at some point in time. They're going to be ready and I'm going to hit their inbox at the time in which they're ready. And that's what's going to, to get me the deal versus somebody who emails someone three times and they're like, ah, they got it. They'll call me when they're ready. Yeah. So, so Gabe, um, you know, walk us through the, the, the idea of, you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing well with it. And now I want to create this community. Let's call it the real estate investing club and provide value, 
you know, community, networking, whatever, whatever it may be. How did you come up with that idea? Um, actually, the I the first you know goal, the the idea that I had was really just to connect with other investors. Um, it wasn't. I mean, I, I love you know creating the podcast and creating content for people, but my main goal was networking. I wanted to meet other investors and hear their stories, hear what they're doing. Um, and so this kind of made sense because I get to interview people, I got to talk to them, I got to you know make relationships. And so um, it started like right when COVID started. I uh, I'd been networking a lot before that, and then COVID started, and I couldn't do it anymore. And so I was thinking like, what can I do? And podcasting made sense. So I started it up. I got, you know, a couple people to sign up and people were super interested. They're like, yes, let's do this. And so I was like, all right, let's go. <laughs> and I've loved it. I, I really like podcasting. I get to meet people like like Mark and Scott who uh, focus on land, something I've never done myself. And I get to learn how land investing works. Yeah, we're, we're the same way. I mean, it's, it's like free mentorship. Yeah, exactly. Ha having the podcast, it's it, it's... It's priceless, isn't it? Yep. And um, you know, we've had Kevin Bupp on and Frank Rolf, and I, I think those are like the two biggest guys right now in, in mobile home park investing. Yep, unless yep. I'm unless I'm missing somebody. Yeah. No, I mean Gabe, I, Gabe, Gabe Peterson. Yeah. Exactly. There you go. Coming up. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. There it is. So, if I'm a newbie, and I'm just now thinking about what asset class I'd want to start in. Given that you've been in a lot of them, what would you recommend today? So if you don't have any experience, um, I would honestly go find somebody in your, your local market and then just work with them. Um, because I tried to do it, you know, solo. I, well, I hired a mentor and that really helped. Um, it was really expensive though. It was like $10,000. And, um, I didn't have to do that. It would have been, I, I think it would have made my process go a little bit faster and been cheaper because I would have been paid. <laughs> uh, if I had just gone and found somebody who was flipping a ton of properties in my area and just said, Hey man, can I be a project manager for you? Can I be, uh, you know, get on your sales team, be acquisition, something like that. Um, so if you're just getting started out, I would recommend going networking, going to meetup groups, seeing people who are actually out there getting shit done and then walk up to them and say, Hey, how can I be of service? How can I help you? Um, I want to learn this, this game. So just tell me, tell me what you need on your team and I can do that. Um, if you're talking about like what type of asset class that, uh, it, it, whatever really gets you going, because, um, there's so many different types of classes out there. I just had somebody on my podcast who does, um, only, you know, industrial. So he only does manufacturing warehouses essentially. So there's just tons of little small things that you can go down. Um, and, you really got to focus because each one, you know, it's all real estate. The fundamentals are the same, but they all are, they also all are very different in terms of how you market to them, um, how you underwrite them, how you manage them once you purchase them and the exit strategies. So you really have to choose one, one path to go down and then get good at that path. Um, so yeah, find a mentor in your area, choose just any asset class that you're interested in. If it's storage, go down storage. If it's mobile home parks, do that single family, multifamily land, whatever it is, choose the path, go down there, find a mentor and, uh, and start working. All right. Scott Todd. I think he's got it, man. I think he's got it. <laughs> he's, 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 he's got the, he's got the formula. Well, Gabe, your, your mentorship has been phenomenal this this podcast but now we're at that point where we're going to ask you for one more nugget of wisdom your tip of the week a website a resource a book something else actionable for the auto passive income listeners to go improve their businesses improve their lives what have you got well if you're interested in land go to the landgeek.com <laughs> and uh uh, other than that, I mean, there's tons of different resources out there. If you're completely new, try, um, I mean, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, obviously, past, or the Cashflow Quadrant, good books. Uh, Real Estate Investing Club, I have a good, if you go to the website, I have a free um, calculator, Excel an analysis sheet that you can use for underwriting. If you're unfamiliar with underwriting, download that. It'll show you the basics um, of how to, to look at a property and analyze whether it's a good deal or a bad deal. Um, yeah, I mean, there's tons of them. There's great podcasts out there like Mark's and my own. 
Um, I don't know. There's there's a lot of different ways to go. So uh, choose one that choose a, a method that works for you. All right, and Scott, Ty, before we get to your tip of the week, I just have to give a shout out to our sponsor, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Go up that mountain of land investing with Scott Todd as your Sherpa, who's done it thousands of times. Go up that mountain quickly, safely, and efficiently. Start building a passive income because let's face it, we can always make more money. We can't get more time. We're going to solve your money problems and your time problems because once that's done, you can work when you want, where you want, and with whom you want. Learn more. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training we have a crazy guarantee just follow the recipe show us your work we guarantee that in 180 days or less your flight school tuition you will make back in terms or cash deals go to landgeek.com forward slash training schedule a call all right scott todd what's your tip of the week mark you know the uh the most challenging part of anything and probably the most challenging part of life is basically your brain okay it's 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 the whole thing about you know your inner voices telling you to do things or not do things check out this book winning the war in your mind change your thinking change your life it's a new book just came out and uh you know it's pretty cool it's pretty cool when you can start to see like we are living we do live with a lot of things that we assume are true and they're not true we we've been told things or we think things and it's all stored right here and every decision that we make is from other experiences that we had either right or wrong this book is pretty good all right um i gotta tell you the book i'm i'm loving right now i i honestly like i haven't read like i read all the time but there's very few books that like i'm like raving about and Scott Todd, your tip on the psychology of money. Gabe Peterson, that book is phenomenal. That should be required reading for anyone, for everyone, whether you invest in the stock market or not. Do you agree, Scott Todd? I, I agree. Absolutely. Is, is, this, is this book as good as the psychology of money? I think it all depends on your, uh, on where you are, right? Because if you, if, I think, Mark, I think that we all have challenges that, that people don't realize. You know, I don't care how successful you are, the self-doubt monster always wants to creep back in. No matter what you're doing, it's always easy for your brain to kind of say, stop, 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 stop. You've gone too far or slow it down, cowboy, or whatever. And then you start to listen to your brain. And I think that what happens is it's the stories that we tell ourselves. It's the assumptions that we make. It's, it's all this stuff. And in fact, in the first chapter of this book, it's the truth to the lies that we accept as, as, as real, right? Like it's the lies that we accept as real, as real truths. And they're lies, like they're little things. It could be little things that, you know, that you've been told as a, as a child about money or about whatever. And you're just like, okay, that's just the way that it is. I mean, a great example might say, you know, oh, well, this political party is only for the rich. And so if that's the environment that you grew up with, well, then that's all you know. And is that the truth or is that a lie? But everything that you, you're living your life around is based on what you've been told or what you've accepted as true. And that's what this book challenges. I, I love that. I mean, and, and for me, like meditation, I think really breaks through that illusion for me where every day for an hour, I just watch these crazy thoughts. And then I'm like, okay, these are just stories I'm telling myself. None of this is true. What is reality? What is true? And, um, and when you get to that point of enough mindfulness, it's, it, it's a, it's, there's a, there's a certain freedom there that that's hard to sort of, uh, articulate. So Gabe Peterson, I know you've been, We've been kind of riffing here, but... Um, <laughs> no, I love it. It's psychology of money. I haven't heard of that one. I'll have to check it out. Oh, my gosh. Fantastic. Fantastic. But I do have an, a tip of the week myself, right. which is everyone go to the realestateinvestingclub.com. <laughs> um, get your education. There's books by Gabe. There's the master class. There's the podcast. He's on YouTube, Spotify, 
there's, uh, the, you know, REI club recommendations, there's off market lead generation services. There's so much in there in one website. So go to the real estate investing club.com and learn more. And what's even cooler is that if you want to get into this asset class, um, I assume it's for accredited investors, but you can invest with Gabe. Is that correct? Yeah, so we are, um, most of our deals so far, we've gotten with seller financing. We're really big on seller financing. If anybody gets into any asset class, I strongly suggest you understand seller financing and use it to your advantage. Um, so, so far, we have not syndicated any deals, we, but we, we're gathering names um, in case we get to that point to a deal who, uh, you know, we really want to take down and they're not willing to do seller financing. So, um, so that is there. You guys can put your information in there if you do want to invest in a future deal of ours. Um, yeah. All right. Fantastic. Gabe Peterson, are we good? I'm great. Thanks for having me on the show. Scott Todd, are we good? We're good, Mark. All right. I want to thank the listeners and remind them the only way, the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like a Gabe Peterson from the real estate investing club.com is if you do us three little favors, subscribe, rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of your review to support at the We're going to send you the $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money 30 days or less for free. So please do it. All right. One, two, three, let, let freedom ring. ring. Gabe's like, Oh, okay. I love it. <laughs> All right. Thanks everybody. Thanks for listening to the art of passive income podcast. Start your journey at www.thelandgeek.com and www.scotttodd.net. Rate and review the podcast and email support at thelandgeek.com. Your screenshot for a free passive income launch kit.